Let's take a look at z-scores. Now, you may have run across this term if you've taken a standardized test and seen, well, this score has a z-score of such and such, and thought, okay, great, I don't have any idea what that means. Hopefully, after you watch this video, it'll make more sense. Z-scores are related to data that is normally distributed, and all it really is telling us is how many standard deviations that particular data item is either above or below the mean. All right, so the Z-score is calculated very simply. Data item minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So the order is important here because I want to know if it's a positive number, that means I'm above the mean, and if it's a negative number, it'll be below the mean. Let's look at an example. We had several people take a dental anxiety uh, survey, and uh, according to this, we have a mean of 12 on this scale and a standard deviation of four. What would the z-score be for the following results? Well, if the result is 16, well, that seems kind of high above the mean, but how high? Is it really crazy high or is it not too crazy? We're going to find the z-score by taking 16, the data item, minus the mean of 12, and dividing that answer, which is 4, by the standard deviation, which is also 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. So really, a, a score of 16 has only one standard deviation above the mean. That's pretty normal. That's, that's it, within 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So that's a pretty typical score. If you think you can follow the formula for the z-score, it is pretty simple. Go ahead and calculate the z-score for b and c. All right, let's see how you did. So if my score is 6, then what is my z-score? How much is this related to the mean? Where is this in relation to all the other data? I'm going to take 6, my data item, minus 12, the mean, and divide that result of negative 6 by a 4 and get an answer of negative 1.5. Okay, now I'm starting to get out there. I'm below the mean, and I'm more than one standard deviation away from the mean. So I'm, I'm getting further away. That's kind of in the minority area. What about 15? Same thing. Take 15 minus 12 data item minus the mean, and then divide our result by 4 and get 0.75. So again, well within the majority of the data. Let's take a look at another example. In this one, we have the mean weight of newborn infants. Okay, data can change over time. I'm not sure when this data was collected, and babies may be heavier now than they were when the data was taken, but we're going to go with this for the example. All right, so the mean weight of the newborns again is 7 pounds and the standard deviation is 0.8 pounds. The weight of a newborn infant is normally distributed. It's very typical, right? It follows the normal bell curve where we are centrally gathered. We want to find the z-score for the weight of a nine pound baby. So let's first look at the graph. We have our normal distribution modeled here, our bell curve. In the middle, I'm going to put the mean, which is seven, and then be below and above that, to the left and to the right, we have the standard deviations. So it's 0.8 pounds, so we'll subtract 0.8 or add 0.8 to get one standard deviation. So everything in pink here is within one standard deviation of the mean. As we recall from another video, that's about 68% of the data. If I subtract 0.8 twice or add 0.8 twice, that takes me two standard deviations out. Now, if I include this blue shaded area, that is about 95% of the data. To get the third standard deviation, we would subtract 0.83 times or add 0.83 times from the mean of 7. That takes us down to 4.6 or up to 9.4. That's 99% of our data when we have a normal distribution. 
Okay, so our nine pounds, that's up here in that like really tiny area. So it's gonna be kind of out there. I would expect a high Z-score. When we actually calculated, taking the data item nine minus the mean of seven and dividing it by 0.8, the standard deviation, we get 2.5. That's telling me that I am way outside the normal area. Now to figure out how far above this 2.5 is above everything else, like what percentile is that in relation to the majority of the data, we need to look at something called a Z table. So here I've given you li the link to one, but there are several out there. Um, if you just Google, uh, you can find several of them. This one is for positive Z-scores, and in the vertical column, it gives me to the nearest tenth. And if I go across the horizontal, it will give me another decimal place to the nearest hundredth. Now our Z-score was 2.5, 2.50. So I'm going to go down the vertical column to 2.5, and I'm going to stop here in the first column because it's 2.50. The number associated there that I've circled is 0.99379. What that's telling me is that nine pound baby is 99.379%. It's like, it that's where it is above everybody else, that 99.379% of the other babies are going to have a lower birth rate, or excuse me, birth weight than that. So it's pretty up there, it's kind of unusual, is what I can tell from this Z table. If you're interested in this, we have a couple homework problems, but more importantly, we also have an extra credit assignment. So check out our course content and see if you can do the extra credit. Let me know if you have any questions.